Welcome to the Education News Show, a partnership between the City of Peoria and the Peoria Unified School District. I'm Danielle Airy, the District's Chief Communications Officer, and today on the show we have our Superintendent, Mrs. Linda Pallas Thompson, sharing updates about the future of our district. We're also welcoming football players from all seven of Peoria Unified School District's high schools, and that's an exciting piece you won't want to miss. Stay tuned for food and nutrition, and we'll be showing you new dishes coming to a high school near you. All that and more after this. Here with our superintendent, she's actually our new superintendent, Mrs. Linda Pallas Thompson. Thank you so much for being well, here, Linda. Thank you, thank you, Danielle. Now you're new, but you're not really new. So you're newish. We're pleased to have you as our new superintendent. But the truth is, you have a really long and rich career here in the Peoria Unified School District and in public education. So I, let's I, talk a little bit about that. Well, thank you. Well, yeah, it's hard to be this old and be new, right? But um, been 29 years in Peoria, which has been my pleasure. I came from. Chicago and did about 10, 12 years back there. Uh, had an opportunity to be a teacher uh, in, in our district, work with our gifted, work with our signature programs. Enjoyed so much being principal at one of our, our wonderful elementaries and then was in charge of several of our schools and then all of a sudden I was superintendent. Just like that. Just like, it just like, uh, just happened. And it's been exciting ever since, uh, a lot going on. And obviously last year, uh, not just in the Peoria Unified School District, but public education across the state, uh, a lot going on, a lot, a lot. And um, you did something really unique as we kicked off this school year to kind of bring us all together and, and really remind our employees, our staff, who we are, where we came from. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you, you certainly, your team was, was major involved, but we, for the first time in 10 years, brought all of our employees together. There were 4,000 people at, at our CCV that was just did a wonderful job accommodating and welcoming us. Our, our teachers were all there. And it was, it was really a wonderful kickoff that even three months later, I'm hearing people very, very excited about feeling like they're part again of the family that Peoria is. And we talked about this theme, the power of one, mm -hmm. as part of that, uh, the power of one to make a difference. And you, as one superintendent, have brought together a leadership team in a really accelerated fashion. We've come together as one, but we've done really some remarkable work around the strategic plan for the district. Can you mm -hmm. share a little bit about what the strategic plan entails? Oh, I'd, love to, I'd love to. Well, in thinking that I was only the interim, <laughs> uh, that does accelerate things when you think you have four or five months that okay, we have to do certain things. And, and there's many of our districts across the country have interims, and I, I didn't realize that at the time. And the concept of that is to keep, is to try to calm things, mm -hmm. to bring people together, um, to get back stable on a, on a boat like we were on, you know, there wasn't a rocky water, but the water became very rocky mm -hmm. in those four months. So any plans that anybody had were kind of thrown a little bit in the air. Um, but what we required at that point was putting a team together to look and say, do we have a strategic plan? What is our plan, our 18-month plan, and then our five-year plan? Mm -hmm. And so we've been playing with that a little bit. And, and I can share some of that with you. Sure, and I think four, four different areas emerged four, from there. Four areas, and these are the areas that our community looks at. When they, it's like looking through a looking glass, through the mm -hmm. lens, mm -hmm. if you will. And we have four areas to say, how is Peoria doing? One of them were school districts, so it's mm -hmm. obvious, student learning, definitely, sure. mm -hmm. right? Um, and in that area, well, that, that's a given, but we're really looking at not just proficiency, but we're looking at growth. Mm -hmm. How are our children growing? And it doesn't matter where they are in the district, every child should be able to grow at least a year in a year, and that's, that's our focus. And that's a significant change in looking towards proficiency, but more looking for growth. Very excited about that. And then, of course, looking at our exit outcomes. Mm -hmm. Are our kids communicating effectively? Are they thinking critically and creatively? And all of those things that they need for post-secondary success. That's student learning. The other area, as, as you know, in the middle of my four months starting, mm -hmm. we had um, the, the tragedy in Parkland. And I, I remember the next day coming in and talking to my team and saying, we need a task force called 
and I called it not on my watch. Mm -hmm. Now, I thought four months was pretty, pretty good, <laughs> sure. not on my watch. Right. But looking at three areas, one is are we prepared? Mm -hmm. Are our schools prepared? And as, as we speak now, we have a, a team out auditing, a uh, team of police and fire, and, and our team went down for FEMA training to audit and look at every single one of our schools. Are we, in fact, as prepared as we think we are? We have an emergency operation plan now that's state of the art and pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 we had a safety council yesterday that looked at it and said, this is, this is pretty, pretty solid. But not only being prepared, do we have the right intervention mm -hmm. and do we have the right prevention for our children? And that's really the social emotional piece, social, right? Social, absolutely. And you know, the, the world is, is an interesting place right now. Mm -hmm. And so our children and our families need to have certain strategies and our teachers on how to work with our children mm -hmm. to help them just to work together, to be happy, to look in a child's eyes and say, we need to do something here because we, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited. We have a team assembled that's, again, looking at it and recommending what are the best programs, state of the art, for that area of prevention. And then certainly advocacy, mm -hmm. coming to programs and saying it's important for all of us to work together to find solutions for the wellness of our children. Mm -hmm. The third area is that our, our community looks at is this thing called stewardship. Sure. Are, are we, in fact, good stewards of the resources that a public school gets from our community? Mm -hmm. And we have, again, a team. You know, anytime you come to my office, you're either, <laughs> you know, move to another position or, or put on a task I force. I have experience right? that. You know so that. So I can vouch for that, sure. So, so we, have, we have a team working on that area. Are our resources there? How are we auditing and looking at our, our pay structure mm -hmm. so that we are not only equitable but are, are competitive? Mm -hmm. And then also looking at our, our policy across the board, making sure that everything is aligned. And a, a big area that we're going to be exploring under stewardship is cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Our systems are only as safe as the cybersecurity measures that we put in place. So that's three. And then probably one of our, our areas that goes through all of them is, is something that you're mm -hmm. in charge of, which is our community partnerships, community connectedness. Not just sharing out to our community, but connecting with them. Uh, the opening certainly brought our community partnerships with CCV. Um, we had our, a wonderful event last week where there was a community forum. People heard about our strategic plan and gave us input into what we're doing, looking at exploring all partnerships that we have across with our, our cities have been amazing with us. And exploring that, and then of course with community connections, sharing out on our upcoming bond measure that's on our November ballot. Good, and I know our community can find a number of different resources related to our strategic mm -hmm. plan uh, on our website, so that's all laid out there. I want to talk to you a little bit about the future, about what's next for the Peoria Unified School District. You know, we're the fourth largest system in the state of Arizona. We're huge, 37,000 mm -hmm. students, and um, that's a lot. It's, it's a lot of responsibility, and I know we don't take that lightly, but, but what do you see as far as what comes next for our district and, and for our students and staff? Oh, my gosh. Um, I think, I think if we, as we look at our strategic plan as a, as a basis, and then we develop what does the future look like for our children in this thing called public education. Public education is the, the keynote, it's the, it's the, I guess the point of this thing called democracy. And it's critical that we make sure that public education continues to grow as our neighborhoods are growing. As, as you're aware of, we're moving way up north. Mm -hmm. Uh, we expected that we would need a, a high school and an elementary. Mm -hmm. We probably need four or five elementaries up there. We, I was all so down at Kellis yesterday. That's growing. Mm -hmm. So as we see our children growing, we just are not filling our schools with children and saying, fine. We need to look at what is state of the art as far as instruction. We need to look at how would we build in technology. Mm -hmm. And we, we've started, we've done a good, a good job starting with that. But it's also looking at what programs probably are programs that no longer are sufficient, that we look at replacing but putting a value add on something that is very, very exciting. It's, it's also, the, um, in the past, a lot of the leadership was a design down. That's how leadership mm -hmm. was. As we are continuing to move forward, it's really a design up kind of a process so that our practitioners in the field have a key role in saying, I'm working on this, this is excellent. How do we replicate that excellence across, across our district? More importantly, across our state and our country. Mm -hmm. I think we are, are 
absolutely the best place to be. I wouldn't be here mm -hmm. if I didn't think so. And I, and I know that we are cutting edge on, on a variety of programs that our people have to talk about and that we have to replicate. Well, we heard recently, in fact, that the city of Peoria uh, was recently named by Money Magazine as, as really the place to be, mm -hmm. uh, which is really exciting news, not only for our community, but, but for our school district and all of our students as well. I have heard you say time and time again that we make decisions based on students, and I know you're the biggest champion of, of, of student-centered uh, in all that we do, right. uh, and I know that our staff just loves having you at the helm, and our community does as well. Oh, thank so you. Thank, thank you so you. much for joining me today. Thank you for always, always joining a pleasure. me. Thank always you. a pleasure. Thanks, thank Linda. For more than four billion years, the Earth has made an annual orbit around the sun. For the past 128 years, those orbits have been reflected in the annual arrival and departure of students in the Peoria Unified School District. Long-term residents and employees of the district have seen great changes during that century and a quarter, but it is safe to say that no one has experienced anything quite like last year. But through it all, through the struggles and successes, protests and promotions, we never lost track of why we are here and who we are fighting for. Every student, every day. And it all starts with the power of one. One teacher, one administrator, one staff member, one person dedicated to making a difference. One person to offer help when it is needed. One person to supply hope where there is none. One person being there when nobody else was. One person who believes that our students will shape the future. One person, one student, our future. In a district with over 37,000 students and nearly 4,000 employees, it would be easy to be a face in the crowd. But that isn't what Peoria is about. Every one of you is here to make a difference, to be the one person each student needs so they can be the best person they can be. One person to help shape them so they can shape the future. Be the power of one. Well, here in the Peoria Unified School District, we know that it's more than just academics. We believe in having well-rounded students, and we know that there is an important benefit to our students being involved in arts education, athletics. We are here with football players from each one of Peoria Unified School District high schools. In fact, they're the quarterbacks, and so I'm so pleased to have this group of gentlemen uh, joining me here today. And we're gonna talk a little bit, not just about football, but I wanna talk to you gentlemen about things like leadership and your schoolwork and really how you do it all. I know you're all really leaders on your campus. And so Devonte, I'm gonna start with you actually, since you're right here next to me. Uh, and I know you're a senior this year. Can you tell me a little bit about maybe what are your plans next year? Are you looking to pursue football? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm definitely looking to you know play football further on in my career. Um, I'm looking to go to college, you know, major in physiology. So I have that going on, so yeah, I'm definitely looking to play football. Well, that's exciting. I know you have bright things ahead of you from Ironwood High School, and so that's that's really exciting. We're going to move to our back row and to Cactus Cobra, and I'm a fellow Cobra as well. Uh, but I'm going to pick on Connor here for just a minute. And, and Connor, I want to talk to you a little bit about leadership on and off the field. As a quarterback, uh, really, how do you maybe inspire your team and, and your school in, in the role of quarterback? I uh, just try to be the best leader I can be, having my pregame speeches, try to motivate the team best I can, and also try to be a leader in the classroom, maintain my 4.0 GPA, and just show that the books are just as important as play on the field. 4.0, that's impressive. That's impressive. And I know Keegan, standing right next to you, also a very bright student, uh, in addition to your talent on the field. Uh, how do you balance your schoolwork and football? Because I know both are pretty demanding. Uh, just time management, always making sure I put school first. Uh, student athlete is what we like to call it. Uh, student comes before the athlete, so always just making sure I'm getting my schoolwork done, and then football comes second. So, 
And I know both your academics and probably for all of your academics and what you do on the football field, it's thanks to an awful lot of um, staff members that we have on your campuses that inspire you. Jonathan, can you maybe talk to us a little bit about a particular teacher or maybe coach who's been an inspiration to you? Uh, one of my coaches, I could say that's been a very big inspiration to me, is um, one of my old freshman coaches. His name is Coach Baca. He, I've known him since I was like in first grade, and he's always been there like throughout the years. And he's always been there because his son went to Centennial. His son played on my old um, youth team, so I've just known him throughout the whole years, and he's still there for me. That's great. That's really awesome. We, we always love to hear that about the inspiration our coaches give. And Kyle, I've got to ask you, because you're from Peoria High School, and that's our oldest school in the Peoria Unified School District, and a really rich tradition there. Uh, many from our community um, that, that know that old main building as they drive by. Um, what has it meant to you to play uh, football and to lead your team at Peoria High School? Um, tradition, we, we talk about it every day, really. Um, Coach Babb really loves to talk about it. Um, it's kind of just, it represents what you play for. So you gotta go out and play like, play like we've always played. You don't step back, you keep working. So it's always in our mind, it's always in the back of our head. Um, but yeah, you just gotta keep working. It's a big, it's a big deal over there. Tradition's really important, I know. And from our oldest school in the district to our newest high school in the district. So I've got to ask you, Jonah, uh, what's it like to play football at Liberty? And, and I think you and Centennial uh, sharing a seat there, uh, the largest schools in our district. But what's it like to be a leader on your campus? Uh, it's great. Um, we have a long, or not long, we have a standard and commitment to excellence at our school. Uh, we've made the playoffs every year. Uh, we always have a great standard of having a high GPA in our programs. Uh, being a leader around the campus too is something that we really commit to, making sure everyone's doing the right thing both in and out of the classroom and outside of school too. That's important, very important. And, and I'm gonna jump back now because I wanna make sure I get you all in. Cade, uh, I know in Kellis, so is it that you say, Kellis pride, is it in you, right? That's kind of a big motto there at Kellis. How do you show pride uh, on the football field and around campus as the quarterback? Just the way I carry myself. Um, I walk um, with all my football teammates. We all, always walk together, and we always are always happy on Fridays, no matter the outcome, and we always work to be the best. Well, I think it's safe to say the future is bright with you gentlemen, uh, not just in your position uh, on the field, but I think how you represent uh, your school and your community when you go out and, and do the, all kinds of different things that you do. Uh, so you're really shining a light out there and, and being strong leaders, and that's so important. So I want to thank you all for being here. And, and so who's playing? I think we've got uh, coming up soon some big rivalry games. When's the Cactus, Cactus Peoria game? Kind of a big rivalry game last game of the season so we'll be looking forward to that and I know some other rivalries maybe we won't we won't get into that too much but uh, so you gentlemen are doing great things keep it up on the field and in your community thank you again to all of our schools for being here with us today I'm so pleased to be joined by Angela. She's from Peoria Unified School District's Food and Nutrition Program. Thank you, Angela, for being here with me. Thanks for having me. And one of my favorite topics, food. <laughs> so it's really exciting to have you here. And I know we've got some treats in front of us, so I'm anxious to talk about that. But before we do, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Food and Nutrition Program in the Peoria Unified School District. It's a massive operation. We have so many students. Yeah. How many meals are you serving and producing out of Food and Nutrition? Uh, roughly, on average, about 5,000 for breakfast. That's co combining elementary and high school, and then about 19,000 for lunch. Oh, that's that's huge. Yeah. I know that's so much work, but I know it, it's probably a challenge feeding uh, some of these little ones, of course, because they're kids, and I know I've got two toddlers, and it's <laughs> always a challenge to come up with options for them. Uh, you're a registered dietitian, so I know you have, play a pretty big part in putting together our menus and our options and things. Uh, how do you decide what to serve? Well, the USDA has guidelines for us that were set in motion by the 2010 Healthy Hunger-Free Kids Act. Okay. And so we have to follow those guidelines, which means that the foods um, have to be low sodium, low in saturated fat, zero grams of trans fat. So we have very strict guidelines. Um, also, kids must take a fruit or a vegetable. So our parents can rest assured that they're, they're getting healthy options for their kids. 
how do you make sure it also tastes good so the kids <laughs> want to have it? Well, we get to sample um, a lot of the foods, and so if we don't like it, we do not serve it to the kids. And we just try to come up with some really great combinations as far as staying on food trends and and seeing what the kids are interested in. And I know you do a lot as far as creativity too, to, to um, come up with some of the options that the kids would love and come to expect, like pizza. How, how do you get away with serving pizza? <laughs> well, with our pizza, there's actually whole grains in the crust. Okay. It's a lower sodium, low fat cheese that's used on the pizzas as well. And it's also a leaner protein, say if there was pepperoni on there, which is also low sodium. And our kids seem to love it. Yes, they enjoy oh, it. That's good. Well, yeah. I know we're focusing on high school today because we serve both at the elementary and the high school level. So I know you've got some options for us. And uh, I can tell you, if you haven't been in a cafeteria, you haven't been at school for a while, uh, this looks nothing like uh, what I remember eating when I was in school. Uh, what do we have here? And uh, tell me a little bit about it. So um, we have a new Fresh Express um, salad line that we have at the high schools right now. And this is one of the favorites, of course. It's a grilled chicken Caesar kale mm. salad with served with a whole grain garlic toast on the side. Kale, who, who think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then over here we have a, a Greek turkey pita that's served with homemade, house-made uh, tzatziki. Mm. Um, and then the broccoli salad that we put on our fruit and veggie bar, which actually the, the kids, they love it. They love their broccoli salad. So, um, and then the next one is our street fish tacos. And those are breaded in whole grain and baked and served in corn tortillas with a nice spicy ranch uh, coleslaw on top. Uh, so what does a high school meal like one of these cost? Two seventy-five. So pretty cost effective. Yes. Uh, and it looks like pretty good portions to me as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. So our, our kids are well fed so they can learn, of course. I'm eyeing these tacos over mm -hmm. here. So I have to scoot this a little closer. I'm gonna have to try a bite of this. Now you were telling me I think th we have two different salsas on here. Yes, yeah, so I'll we have the up. the black bean and corn salsa there and then just a, a homemade pico de gallo type salsa. And which one's the spicy one? I would say this one would be a little bit spicy. Okay. So if you're trying to stay away well, from that. Well, no, I'm gonna, I, but I'm gonna sample this one because okay. it's right here in front of me. Um, and while while I'm diving into this and trying not to make just a horrific <laughs> mess, uh, so uh, tell me, I, I know nutrition is a big part of what you do, but how can parents maybe help to choose some healthier options at home when their kids aren't at school? I would suggest um, offering the fruits and vegetables, even if you, if, even if you don't think your child's gonna take them, offering them up and just putting them out there. If they take it, great. If they don't, maybe they will next time. That's delicious. I'm glad you like really, it. Really, really good. And can't even tell that that's um, whole grain. So <laughs> okay. really good. Good options. I was trying not to make too much of a mess here. It's hard with tacos. It is, it is hard with tacos. <laughs> I had to go for that one, of course. And then tell me a little bit about the drinks we have here. So we have, um, we offer for our white milk, we offer low fat, 1%, and then fat for your skim milk. And then for our flavored milks, such as chocolate or strawberry, they have to be fat-free. And I was just so surprised to see we have so many options with the milk. So f actually four different options for milk. Yes. And then I know you, you put this water here in front of me as well. We offer this for our high school? Yeah, we offered bottled water for our high school students. And for elementary, they can get water in a cup if, they, if they'd like instead oh, wow. of milk. That's, it's good stuff. Well, so many healthy options here for our students. So Angela, I want to thank you so much for bringing all these in and sharing all that great information with us. Uh, for our families, you can find our school lunch menus available on our website, peoriaunified.org. There is so much to see around the Peoria Unified School District, and I hope you won't just take my word for it. We invite you to come out and see what a day in the life is like for our elementary and high school students. We hope you'll join us on our fall field trip. It's coming up on October 24th, and we look forward to showing off the incredible programs and remarkable students across our district. This year, we're focusing on the power of one and how we each have the ability to make an impact in the life of a child. As we close our show today, we leave you with a story about someone making an incredible difference right here in our district. Miss Nancy is the heart of Country Meadows. She has served our campus for many years. As soon as her son's enrolled here at Country Meadows, Day one, she's been serving us every day and hasn't missed a day. She has given us and devoted 
five to six hours each and every day to support our teachers, our students, and our community members here at Country Meadows. So throughout her time here, Miss Nancy has built relationships by working with students one-on-one, -on -one, getting to know them, their families, and their needs. She helps serve them on campus by reading books with them sitting listening to their stories and telling jokes and just connecting back and forth in any way she can. Teaching has always been in my heart. I have wanted to teach kindergarten through second grade forever. But when I was in college, I had a professor who told me, no, you cannot teach from your wheelchair. I wasn't, I did not become the teacher that I wanted to become, but I'm still in a school. So if I can make a kid happy by looking at a spelling test or just coming through the workroom giving me a high five, it's made my day. And I'll bet you it made his day too. As a volunteer, if there's anything that I can do to help your job be even a little easier, that's why I do what I do. Just one volunteer, one community member has made a huge difference and a huge impact on our campus and within our students. It's just, I guess I have a big heart, <laughs> maybe.